Welcome to the Becoming Body Smart podcast, where we unlock the secrets of sustainable health and fitness and help you master your health habits. If you're tired of quick fixes, generic blueprints, and chasing short-term results, you're in the right place. It's time to become body smart. So I'll, I'll intro it. So we wanted to talk today about a really cool um, podcast that we saw. So Shannon shared it with me. These are three people that I've already followed and they were all on one podcast together. So it was kind of fun um, because it's like, oh, these are, these are our guys. These are some of the people we look to. Um, and so uh, I will post that really quick. Here's the link to this uh, podcast. And so Dan Butner and Jay Shetty really are some of my favorite people. Um, and then Ben Liedel. So they were talking about this idea of blue zones. And so that blue zones show that we've talked about before, um, Dan Butner is the guy um, who who kind of runs that. And so um, we wanted to, you know, share more about what kind of the blue zones are and, and about some of the things that we learned from this podcast. And and so really really good stuff i we recommend going and listening to it um really interesting thoughts about the way to create a healthy environment so we live especially here in the united states in a very unhealthy environment and we've created it that way we've we've optimized things for quick food driving cars and and sedentary lifestyles and we have not followed the principles of what makes these blue zones where people live uh, that, that's what they call them these these areas in the world where people tend to live longer lives um, where they have more people living to 100 and so um, they what they've done is analyzed those areas and seen well what are how are people living that live to 100 and and what do they need to do and what they found is that the way we live now is nothing like what helps people live long healthy lifestyles so um that's that's something we want to change and we want to discuss more about that why we're not there and what we need to do to get there to living healthier lifestyles because it's not just about living longer it's about living better and and that's one of the things that they found that the people that live longer um, in high concentrations also tend to be those that live better, um, that live healthier lifestyles. Um, anyway, any thoughts there, Mark? Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So I, I just, I love this idea of, of setting up our environments, right. And recognizing the environment that we're in, because when it comes to health, it, there's a lot. Right? It can feel overwhelming sometimes, and especially when we aren't where we want to be at with our health, there can be a lot of guilt and shame, and we think, why am I not good enough to make these changes, or what's wrong with me, or, or you know, what's going on? And, and while we'll talk about personal responsibility in a, little, in a little bit, one of the things they discussed in this podcast was you know, the obesity rate now versus the 80s, and the point they made is that People in the 80s didn't just have some greater magical level of, of self-control, more discipline, more motivation. It's that the environment and the context that they are making choices in changed drastically. You know, we have fast food places everywhere, right? Uh, high fat, sugar, salt uh, foods are very cheap and they're very readily available. Like Cameron mentioned, um, our, our site has been built on, on long commutes, right? Suburbs and then into the city for, for work. And so we're spending a lot of time um, sitting versus on our feet. Where you look at some cultures in, in Europe, right? It's it's kind of a multicultural experience in this in this very small area. The It's made for walking. There's, you know, places of business. There's places to hang out, right? Do your shopping, do all these different things. There's museums, and, and art galleries and all these things that are in close walking distance. And so the, the environment drives people to make different decisions. 
And so just having a recognition of that and, and taking a step back and saying, well, what, what does my environment look like? Right? What are some of the things that push me to make choices like X, Y, Z or, 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 or other choices? And so once we understand the environment that we're in, two, I think it can help us give ourselves some grace and recognize that, well, maybe I'm not just this, you know, lazy, terrible slob who, who can't make any good decisions. And recognizing a lot of the, the, the fact that our environment plays a big role in the choices that we make and really in the choices that are available to us. Again, you think like if there's not easy access to, uh, to, to poor quality food, then I'm less likely to make that decision. We think about the same thing with streaming, right? Um, you know, or, or wanting to see a movie. It used to be that you had to, okay, a new movie's coming out. Like I've got to go to the, you know, I got to set aside time. I got to go plan to do a movie theater. Now you can just sit on your couch and you have so many different movies available. You never even have to lift a finger hardly, right? Maybe to change the button, but you know, you can use the voice remote and uh, and tell it to do the thing. You don't even have to don't have to move the finger. So so anyway, just I think understand. Yeah, you don't even have to get up and walk or across the room to put in a DVD or change the channel, right? You it's just all remote. Even simple things like that. And now yeah. voice remote. You don't even have to move your thumb. <laughs> it's so easy. And we've talked in the past before about neat. Right, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, right? The the calories that we burn just from moving. Even simple things like that, like where I used to have to walk up and put the DVD in. In by themselves, right? That's not a ton of calories, but lots of little things like that add up over days and weeks and, and months and years. And so that can can be the difference between putting on an extra five or ten pounds a year and and not. And so looking at our environment and seeing are there some things that I can start to change or are there some things I can modify to to bias my decisions towards things that are going to be better for my long-term health yeah so even even a hundred calories a day i believe a hundred calories a day of, of calorie balance in the wrong direction i believe is 10.4 pounds over the course of a year it's a lot so that's kind of crazy that's a lot yeah so so that's where those little things in our environment and and the problem is so this this idea of decision roulette um is that so many of well it's really decision russian roulette um so many of the decisions are this loaded gun of of poor choices and it's it's actually that the empty spot where there's no bullet is uh is only one of the six choices that the other five choices are bullet loaded. You know, that that's that's the problem with our current environment. You know, Mark brought up in the 80s, we, you know, I remember as a kid that going out to a restaurant and especially like, you know, McDonald's or fast food or, or things like that was a treat, right? That was something we, we got if we, you know, as, as kind of more of a reward or a treat or it was special and it was outside the norm and now, that's for a lot of people. It's like, where are we going to eat tonight? Is is more the question. Um, and eating out is more the norm than eating in. Um, that's a problem on, on so many social levels because we don't connect as well as a family. We don't, um, you know, all those things that come along with that of, of not sitting down and having a meal together. And so, um, I, I don't know. So there's those aspects of it, I guess, of of not being able to have the opportunity to make those decisions. And so our, our goal then is to say in our community and in our individual lives, what's our responsibility to try to set things up as much as we can more inefficiently? We've worked so hard to make everything so efficient that it's affecting our health. So what can we do to make it maybe less efficient or or more purposeful in terms of getting meaningful movement in in our lifestyle or making healthy food choices or activity choices? So one of the things that they found in these blue zones, it wasn't that these people made these incredible decisions to be healthy. It's that their environment was set up to where eating those foods and moving and walking in those ways 
and stuff was just part of their lifestyle. It's just what they naturally did. It wasn't this conscious effort to lead a healthy lifestyle. It was just that that's what they naturally did. And the problem is they think within the next 10 to 15 years, all of those blue zones will likely go away. That the conveniences of modern life will have taken over and they will no longer be blue zones. And that's kind of sad to think about that the lifestyle that they led that kept them so healthy and happy is being overtaken by kind of this Western American um, lifestyle. Uh, and so, so what is our responsibility in our, in our individual lives as well as our communities to change those things? And there are a couple of key concepts that they found in these, um, in these areas. One was making your life less efficient so that it's more walkable and you design more movement into your life and lifestyle. And then there's this hapari bo, this idea that you only eat to be 80% full. So eating off of smaller plates or finding ways to trick yourself in your environment to eat less quantity of food. And then this idea of moai, um, of having more community. So you find a tribe, a group that you can belong to, that you do activities with. And then another idea of ikigai, which is purpose. And we've talked a lot about that before. But um, those, those ideas are, are things they consistently found that if they can have that personal responsibility as well as uh, community responsibility to provide better food choices, better uh, sense of community, and have a group that you can do activities with, that you can have a purpose to your life, and then make your set up your environment to move more, that those things really help you lead a healthier, more active, you know, not just longer, but better lifestyle. Um, Shannon said, the problem is in the decision making. When we have to make a decision to be healthy with every choice, we are bound to fail. Yeah, how do we, they said in one part that uh, food choices, 97 out of 100 food choices we have to make um, are unhealthy food choices. So how are we ever going to choose the right choice when we're the, it's stacked against us? Shannon also said, I, I thought this statistic of how we make 220 food choices a day and only 10% of them are conscious was mind blowing. And that is, that is mind blowing. Only about 10% of our food choices are conscious and the rest we just kind of eat what's in front of us, which is true. I do that all the time. With 220 decisions a day, there's no, no question that there's decision fatigue. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I think, and thinking about personal responsibility, like, it's so easy to highlight, well, these are the things that I'm failing about, and so it, it must be all my fault. But how often do we think of the good things that we do that also have a lot to do with our environment, right? The context that we grew up in. Why do we think the way that we do? Why do we make the decisions that we do? Good choices and bad choices are highly influenced by the environment that we grew up in, by the environment that we live in now, by the people that we're surrounded by. And so I think it's you're, you're yeah, you're Moai. And so I think it's very easy to like beat ourselves up when we do something bad and then, you know, give ourselves two thumbs up when we do something good when maybe that choice was also, you know, from social engineering. And so recognizing like how much power our environments really have. And so taking a moment to question that, right? Why do I believe the things that I do? Why do I make the decisions I do? If I were born in a different time, in a different place, in a different context, what, how would I see the world differently? What different types of decisions would I make? And, and to that point of, of having to make so many decisions, that's so true. We're going to struggle. We're going to fail. And that's part of the difficulty with so much of the, the stuff that's out there for health and fitness is that it's relying on motivation. And motivation is an exhaustible resource. It's, it's, it's relying on us making decisions again and again and again. So we have two main systems in our brain. We call them, uh, Daniel Kahneman calls them system one and system two. And system one is, is kind of that, that quick response system. Um, it makes those decisions effortlessly. System two requires more thought, it requires more intention. And so if we're constantly having to use system two, 
Like we just get overwhelmed. That's when we feel like so fatigued. That's when we feel that mental fog is we just have too many decisions that we're trying to process through that second system. And it can, and it's, it's very useful when we need it to solve a specific problem. But when we're using it, oh, sorry, but when we're using it to make simple decisions day after day after day, that becomes really, really overwhelming. And so we've got some choices in front of us. And, and, and this goes back to that process of trial and learning. What ex running different experiments to make those small changes in my environment that are going to make it easier to make the healthier decision. Um, you know, it's, it's, can I, can I remove the things, can I maybe remove some of the things that are, are leading me towards poor decisions? And can I add some things um, that will, will help me to make those better decisions as well? And so I've, I've talked about this before, but one example that I loved was, uh, they called it the super fridge. And they extended it to the pantry too, is, and this one was a little bit more extreme. Um, you know, the changes that we make to our environments don't have to be quite this extreme, but, but I like this as an example. They just, they, they got rid of all the food that was not making them feel well, that wasn't fueling them well, that was leaving them feeling lethargic and tired and just kind of blah in their fridge and in their cupboards. And so when they went to, and, 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 and so when they went to open the fridge or went to open the cupboards, the food that was available was food that, that helped fuel them well, that helped them feel better. And they had spent time preparing it so that they didn't have to go in and prepare a whole meal every time they wanted something. Right? They, they planned ahead, they had snacks available, so that it just made the, the like it, it, it put up one barrier to eating you know, health, food that wasn't super healthy, and it made up an easier path having it pre-prepared that they could just go and grab something, they didn't have to think about it. Oh, this is my snacks drawer, right? This is my snack shelf. And so they could do that, and that ended up being really effective. And there's so many different small tweaks that we can do to, to change our environment. Um, that'll help us to, to be healthier. Right? Another one that we've mentioned is getting a lockbox for your phone, right? You just put it in there, and for whatever period of time, like, you can't touch it. And so can that gear you to spend more time socially with the people that are important to you, to get off the social media, to get off the news sites, and to just be present in that moment with, with the people that you love? So let's see, Terry said, my issue is almost all the good food has to be prepared, and I, and I stink at pre-planning. And to, like, I, I, I'm with you there, Terry, <laughs> right? Like there's, there's times that I'm really good at, at um, meal planning and then I, you know, I, I fall off the wagon. Um, I think Shannon, well, Shannon and Cameron would be good ones to talk about this because they are very good at, at planning their meals. Thoughts on that, Cam? Yeah, I mean, that's, it definitely takes a lot of effort, and it's about building those habits. Um, yeah, Shannon would definitely be the best one to talk about it, and, and she would be the first to say that we're not perfect at it, that it's not something that we are always good at every single week. At the same time, we really have made it a commitment to, to get better at it. So one of the things that we did at the very beginning that I think helped us more than anything was we, we kind of made a, a pledge or a pact to ourselves and, and each other and whatever to not just go, I don't know what to do for dinner tonight, so we're just going to go grab something to eat. We kind of made that pledge that we weren't going to do that anymore and that we were going to figure it out, that we were going to, like have some, you know, pre-planned go-to meals that when when things fall apart, which they often do, um, we have some easier meals to make that we can make quickly that are still relatively healthy or at least not super unhealthy, um, but that we can go to and make at, on a moment's notice. So that was one of the things that we set up first, honestly was just kind of what to do when things fall apart, which it does often. Um, and then we started working on the planning. And, and so for a while we had like a formal, every Sunday night we had like a planning session where we would plan what the meals were gonna be for next week and what we were gonna grocery shop. We would buy all the food online um, and then go pick it up on Monday 
and that that helped a lot and and like i said we're not always perfect at it shannon does an amazing job um shannon said yep and when you decide not to go out you get really sick of those few easy meals so you start to get creative it's true <laughs> it's true but but we still have a few go-to's like our boys seem to really like the their meatless fajitas we just uh, chop up um some veggies and do it with black beans and refried beans and then the cook your own tortillas and green peppers and onions and our kids love them they they always like them whenever we're like hey guys we're just doing fajitas tonight they're like oh sweet we love them you know like they really do like them and so we have a couple of go-to meals like that but then it does force you to be more creative when you're like oh my gosh that's how we eat the fajitas <laughs> um and so uh you start but but it's about building that habit it's not about being there it's about the journey of getting there and so it took us a while to build that habit and it's built slowly over time to where it's more just part of our lifestyle that we order groceries and and when i say we i mean shannon um <laughs> orders groceries and that's always her her least favorite question to ask everybody what should i make this week what should we do for dinners this week and I think it's her least favorite question to ask, too, I'm sure, because it's this battle of, like, you know, finding foods that are healthy but that the kids will like and eat that aren't too hard to prepare that, you know, that's always, that's always a battle for sure. But you start to get, like, about a month's worth of recipes that you kind of gather together, and then we just kind of repeat those every month. Um, and sometimes we're good about getting on a schedule where we literally like follow the same schedule every month. Um, and, and because it's been a month since we had that last, that meal again, then that works pretty well. And uh, other times we're not as good at following that schedule and that's, that's okay. But we've kind of made that commitment to where honestly, for most of our meals, we eat a healthy home cooked meal almost every single night. Um, and and the level of healthy varies for sure. Um, like spaghetti carbonara probably wouldn't be considered terribly healthy. At the same time, the home cooked version of it with wheat noodles and fresh uh, cheeses and things like that is definitely better. Um, you know, it, it's better than what we get at a restaurant for sure. The quality of it, um, and so it's it's there's a balance between what will, will my kids eat? What will they enjoy eating? And, and all those things too. And so, um, yeah, it's about creating those habits of getting there. So, you know, those, those key areas of, of where we need to create those habits, having the right community. So the MOAI having the right community helps you a lot because those are activities that you can do with that MOAI that maybe you eat, some of your meals with that group and they're all invested in eating the healthy options as well or um you know having that eeky guy having a specific purpose to your life gives you a reason to eat healthy because you want to fuel your body for that purpose you know so i think taking a look and and establishing those different areas of your life can really be helpful um in in planning that out and solidifying those those areas of, of making sure that you're making healthy decisions in all of those areas one one other thing that i'd say real quick yeah. too that i i thought about oh that oh, oh sorry really really quick shannon said meal swap with others so you are forced to plan and then you only cook once or twice a week when we first started eating healthier and doing all of this and meal planning that's actually how we started was we meal swapped with somebody else that had a, a similar family size and everything. And the meal swapping really helped because it forced us to prepare. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So another thing is trying out a meal prepping service, right? There's a ton of them out there. There's like, like Factor, Hungry Root. Um, uh, yeah. I can't remember any, some of the other ones. But trying that out, right? Right. If your stage of life allows for that, I think it's a good option to go to make sure that you have those healthy options in front of you. Yeah. And, and not everyone's will. And you can do it 
you know, a lot of a lot of prep, a little prep, hardly any prep, right? Some of them are just you put this in the oven and then you take it out when it's done. You can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner with some of them. You can do snacks, or you can just do certain meals, right? There's a, a ton of different ways that you can try that out and see if that works for you, right? Is it easier just to have, you know, a couple meals a week that are just already done, or snacks? And and one thing, so so I, I've done it for quite a while for dinners, and one thing that I found was like there were certain recipes that I really liked, and so I knew exactly what was in those recipes, and then I could go out and, and get that myself for cheaper usually. Or, hey, these are these are snacks that I really like. And so even if you don't use something that long term, getting some new recipes, right? Getting some ideas for what you like, getting some ideas for snacks that you can have on hand that are just easier. And so and that's another thing that can can make that decision process easier. You know, it doesn't have to be all my meals planned or, or none of them, but maybe just start with planning a couple meals a week or trying a meal delivery, one or two meals a week or something like that, and seeing if that works for you. Um, let's see. Nathan said, I found perusing meal prep plans gave me ideas for home cooked meals because I am cheap. Haha. <laughs> Love fries give me recipe ideas. Just looking at the pictures, which is great, right? Sometimes that's all it takes is just some new ideas to, to, to spark something. And so figuring out what that looks like for you and then having those conversations with, with your fam family or with your, I can't, M Moai, I can't remember how you pronounce that. Um, and, and how do you add more of those healthy behaviors in, right? How do you construct the environment? Um, to make those decisions just so much easier. How do we change those things from just really uh, high energy mental process <laughs> decisions to habits that just happen quickly and, and methodically so that we aren't having to constantly uh, make those choices, but that our, our life and our environment is just engineered to make the healthiest choice the easiest. Yeah. I poach ideas yeah. from citrus pear. Well, I've got to go to this meeting. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think doing those things, taking those steps is what's going to help us be healthier and create healthier communities as well. So we didn't really get into the community aspect. We'll have to talk about that some more, um, on another call. for listening to the Becoming Body Smart podcast. If you have questions, thoughts, or want to continue the conversation, reach out to us on our socials or join our community. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It helps us bring you even more valuable content. Remember, sustainable health is a lifelong journey, and we're here to support you every step of the way. Live longer, live stronger, and become body smart.